Okay, so the conference call, according to my computer time, I have 3.58, so I am going to wait until 4 o'clock to start talking and going through everything, but it is being recorded as of now. So for those of you who are um, listening, if you're talking, whatever you're saying prior to us getting started will get recorded. And then those recordings we will uh, download uh, to YouTube and then share those links with you. Um, so we will, those are being live recorded today, and we'll record all the things we talk about, and then that'll go up for the next person to see, or you can go back and listen again to anything that we've talked about today. Is anyone having difficulty hearing me? So um, a couple little housekeeping things. I already see we have three chat items, and I can see that Brandon is telling me I can hear you just fine. Yes, yes, thank you. Perfect. So that was one of the things that I wanted to, um, a little housekeeping thing. Anytime you want to ask a question, and if you don't want to ask the question verbally, you can ask the question by sending us a chat, and that is the little word bubble up in the far right corner. I'm hovering over that right now. Anytime you want to ask a question privately or just a question where you don't have to talk and you just want to type it in, just go to that word bubble and then type me a message. And I will try to keep my eye on that. And then I can read the question to everybody if it's one that needs to be shared with everybody and then answer it for everyone. And then I'll also type in a response for you as we go. I have 4 o'clock on my clock right now, on my computer clock, so we will Go ahead and get started. Um, as I said uh, before, I know I had somebody just chime in right now. Um, there's a word bubble over here in the corner. Anytime you want to type a message, just type me that message, and then we will respond to that. Um, I want to look at our attendee list. It looks like we have 12 people on, and I have Brandon Smith. I have John Edgar as our host, myself, Jennifer Waters, John Heiser. Um, I'm calling in on my cell phone. Um, so that I can try to reduce the, any typing noise that I would make as I type. Um, Steve Bike, and then I see um, Putnam County High School, you're calling in as well. So that's John on his computer and his phone. And then Kimberly Bike, that's Steve Bike on his computer and phone. Okay, so those are our attendees. Welcome, everyone, to the conference call. Um, hopefully everybody can see the screen that I'm looking at. And the screen that I'm looking at would be a listserv message from myself. Um, everyone can see that screen? Yes. Great. So what I'm going to do is just basically walk us through um, opening up the state degree application and then how to get to the state degree application. We're going to start at the very basics. And for those of you who have already looked into your application, I apologize if we're going too basic to begin with, but I want to make sure that we address all of your questions. So the very first thing you're going to do is log in to AET.com. So I'm just going to click on that. Um, and I'm already logged in, but what you would do then is um, log in to AET as yourself. Then the next thing you're going to do is you click on Reports. So you can see I've gone over to the Reports button, and I'm going to click on Reports. And then under FFA Reports and Submission, there is FFA Award Degree and Application Manager. And of course, you're seeing the screen that I have. I'm going to click on that. And right now, I have two sample state degrees in this folder. The first one, dated 12-8-2016, is an application that was created with AET in a record book application. So showing exactly how items move directly from your AET, Records Man Record Keeping Management System, into the degree application. That application is not one that I think a lot of us, or any of us truly, will be using with your students because many of your students obviously either have paper books or easy records. And so the other application that I have open is, the, or the one I started is 12-12. 2016, and that one is a, a record book that we had to unlock. But I will open this one first. This application that I'm opening, again, is an application that was started by an AET record book. Okay? So but in order, have a question. Yes. Let's see back here. If they're using the AET record book, does it continually update all the time when they're inputting their information? Yes. Yes, it does. 
So how are we going to judge that application if they're doing it now and then they enter stuff? It's not going to... Evan Price. So once you have, so the question Steve asked is, all right, so a student application would be constantly updating with information that they put in their record book. So for example, student, your state degree interviews are on January 31st and proficiency awards aren't until February 6th. Will entries that they make if they were to change something after state degree interviews, would that affect their application? That's the question you're asking, Steve? That is, that is correct, because can their degrees end on like December 31st, and so if they continue with that, doesn't that affect their eligibility and things like that? Yes. Yes, it would, and I'm, I'm having to, I'm thinking that through. Um, how you don't have to have an answer now. That was just I don't. Question. I don't have an don't answer have now, but that is a really good question. I mean, basically, it's how do we lock in AET entries to complete the app with ending date of 1231. Because I just had a teacher today ask about that, and that got me thinking. It is a good question, and I, I guess I would probably have to have probably haven't put a whole lot of thought into it because we know that no application this year is going to be all AET. Right, that's what I was looking at, but it's right. more of an American but it is degree a, one. So I just wanted to get that question out before I forgot. Right. It. Well, as an American degree app, so this application—that's a good point too. This application is, um, um what do I want to say just like the American FFA degree application, very, very similar. So, okay, good question, Steve. I've written it down, and um, uh, we, will, we will address that. That's a good one. So John Heiser is asking, can we get to these examples? Not at this time, because I uh, want to – yeah, because I'm just using them for purposes to show you because you would be able to open up any – you could open up a, a state degree application for any one of your students. So I don't know that there would be a need for you to look at these this time, but I can ask if, we want, if you want to be able to look at the examples. Um, so, okay. So back to the application manager so because of all of our students are going to be having easy records to enter into the state degree application you are going to go down to number 12 on these instructions and you're going to click click here to unlock the application that's the first step you need to do within the application to be able to input your data directly into the application now, you Mindy, I've got another I've got another question Steve bike here again yes yeah. Nope. On mine, when I, I logged in as a student who's looking, my number 12 is different than yours. Mine says here this application is just the opposite to that it's not using the AET records. Is that because I don't have the students keeping AET records? Right. Yes, that's because your student doesn't have AET records, so you don't have to click unlock. Okay, thank you. Yes, good question. So I'm going to go back to mine and open the application that is unlocked. And the instructions page on the front is very similar to the American FFA degree as we have talked about. Um, and the very first icon, the circle with the triangle, there is a student help video that explains how to get started on their application. Um, that's as good as if not better than the webinar we're doing right now. Brandon Smith brought up a really good point too. It says make sure you don't have ad blocker or it won't let you unlock it. Interesting. Brandon, I did not know that. That's not been brought to our attention. Okay, thank you. I'm writing that down. Okay, so um, back to this, the, the, the little self-help video there. Um, it says, and another piece that I want you to understand in number two is that you um, – You'll, your information is automatically saved as you move from one page to the next, and you'll see the little, I call it the old floppy disk, the old disk pop up to let you know that your information has saved. But it will automatically save as you move from one page to the other. 
Um, you can see in the, the directions, um, it says your JavaScript is enabled. Um, it tells you to read all the instructions first. You do use the tab key to manipulate from one cell to the next throughout the application, and that is something that we will show you as we, as we go along through. Um, this is where you put in your beginning. Oh, I think this is, takes care of our question, Steve. Um, when you enter in your beginning and ending dates in the application, it will take up to the ending date. So if you put in 1231, that will be your ending date. I knew that. That's from Americans. So there, yeah. So even if a student continues to work on the record books after 12-1 for proficiency awards, it's not going to change what they have in when you set the ending date on your stage degree application. Gotcha. Thank you. That, that, yep, that question is taken care of. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you begin with your cover section. We'll start on the cover section. You only use whole numbers. There's so no no decimals, and um, you won't put any negative numbers um, in cells. There are these little green question icons, um, and that, those little green question icons, wherever there is an entry, you can hover over and then click on the little green icon. When you hover over it, it will tell you a definition of um, equity, or it will give you a definition of asset, and it will tell you, you know, if you are meeting a, a met or a, a no, it will tell you why on those little green questions. So those little green questions are throughout the application and are there to, to help you answer questions as you go along. As you are looking at the application, all items um, on must, all checklist items will indicate a met or a yes to qualify. If you have a not met or a no, when you go to print the application, it will say draft, 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 draft across the application itself. And so you don't want to print it, obviously, if it says draft. So this, the application itself forces you to have everything in the application cor correct and to be met and to be answered as yes. So very similar to the American degree application in that aspect. When you print an American degree application, it's the same way with our new state degree application. It will not say, it will say draft as long as there's a not met or a no on the application. And then um, it says, for fairness, all applications must respond to questions in the space provided. So you've got that space. That's what you have. So you can see on my number 12, this is the application that I've already unlocked. It says click here to lock the application back to AEP. And, it's, and I'm going to go back to the listserv that I sent because I want to make sure that I want everyone to read number 6 in the items on the list. It says the application is automatically locked to AEP. To unlock, you have to hit unlock. Um, you do not want to go back and forth between the two. You want to do it one way or the other um, because it will lose that information. So if you connect it to the AET and then you disconnect it, it will erase the data that you put in the application. So pick whichever one you're going to do and then stay with that. Go back to this, go back to this tab. Let's have another chat. A teacher asked me today if they will be able to save the application to their trusty flash drive, and can they do that, or will it only be on AET? So when you go to, I'm gonna, when you go to print the application, you go down to print application, and it'll give the option. Well, it's telling me I can't, but you see where it says generate draft PDF. As soon as you click on generate draft PDF. It's down here now. Here is my PDF that says draft, draft, draft. You can then save that to a flash drive, to the desktop, to the server, to the school server, wherever you want it saved, a thousand places, you can do that. You can't but, go in and edit that because that's a PDF, but you can – a student – it obviously continues to save an AET, but you can save it after you have generated it to a PDF. So quick – the question, my question, John Heiser here, you can only work on it on AET. You can no longer yes. do an Excel anymore. It's yes. AET only. It's AET only. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So here is the cover page. Um, and the cover page, um, it does not provide, it doesn't contain any information that is new or unusual to a previous state degree application. Um, because mine is an example where it says chapter ID and member ID, 
I don't have a member identification number because your student um, either has an account with AET or has an account with AET to be able to open up their application, their student ID number should pull over. If it does not, then that goes back to um, you as the teacher. Manage. What I want to do. Oh, experience manager. I have to manage the account when I um, put in there. And this is where I would add a student or add a class. So when you add your student, then it'll pull that member number over. But my example does not have a member number because it's, it's my example from our FFA, um, from our FFA login that we have. So again, everything um, on the cover is pretty much information that we have asked, that has been asked for in a previous stage of your application. The top part is just name, address, family, gender, all of those specifics. The next piece is the chapter information. So you put all your school information there. Um, the next box is their date of birth, the year their FFA membership began, um, have they had continuous FFA, active FFA membership for the past 24 months, um, but the dues paying member received the year they received their state degree, year they received their chapter degree, all that information gets plugged in there. Because that information gets plugged in there and it automatically populates that when we get to the checklist, you'll see that the checklist is much smaller than it's been in the past because all of that is generated within the application and won't go to print ready unless those are checked yes. Mindy, I got a question for you, Steve Mike. Yeah. Yep. On absolutely. the year on the year for the FFA membership began, I've got some this year that started as seventh graders. Is it that year or is it when they started high school? It was when they started high school. Okay. That's what I thought. Thank you. Yes, you're, well, you're welcome. Good question. So then the very bottom box is where they put their GPA information and the number of hour, ag hours that they had in your class. And again, all of this information has been on your cover pages of previous state degree applications. Quick so question on the years and the years in ag, John Heiser. It yes. seems to be, always be a question in our section. Example, if you have three and a half years in ag, in ag, how many hours is that? You take one class a year? Put it all together for me real quick before you do anything. Um, I have to look at that, John, but I, from what I remember, like, don't they count to a year in school in an, one ag class is 120 hours? There's, a, there's something somewhere. I'm trying to remember where I've seen that at. But typically, you count two years as 240 hours, three years as 360 hours. Okay. All right. I mean, that just seems to be a problem in our area, so I just wanted to clear that up. Uh, that's you. maybe something that I need to clarify for the state, though, so that's a good question. If you could, I would I've, do it. I've seen it somewhere, John. I'm just not – can't tell you off the top of my head where I've seen it, but I'm certain that it's 120 hours is what they equal in ag class ever, or you know, any class that you're in one a year. Okay. Uh, for state for hours. Okay, thank you. thank you. Okay, so can I move off the cover page? Any other questions about the cover page? Okay, so now we have moved to the basic setup page. And remember when I told you on the very beginning, these little green question marks it says represents the beginning of your application, which includes first day of ag ed, development of your SAE plan, and FFA involvement. So that's what that date means. Now, what we have talked about and what we put out um, from our last FFA board meeting is that um, your students and your students who started their SAE their freshman year, that date can be 9-1 of that freshman year. And then, you, of course, your ending date is automatically, we put the ending date as 1231, and then obviously the, the year will update itself as that goes. Okay. So then the next thing the student has to do is pick the SAE type they have, and then there's a, a description of each of the SAE types. And obviously, you can check more than one box if that is um, 
if that pertains to your student. A couple things I want to make sure that uh, everyone understands is that if I pick just placement, did you see what happened to the number of pages over here where I'm at with cover, basic setup, additional requirements, SAE placement, exploration? Look at the number of tabs I have here now and then watch when I click entrepreneurship and it updates and there's obviously more there. So a state degree application, and again, just like the American degree application, it's only going to print the pages that are relevant to that student's SAE type. So let's say if I take placement off, it updates it again and pulls off any placement pages. And the student, if, they, if they're only entrepreneur, they only need to be doing entrepreneur pages, and the entrepreneur pages are the only ones that print the only ones that apply to them. So then you don't have blank pages or students wondering what should go in these blanks when it doesn't pertain to them because they're placement or when in their entrepreneur it doesn't pertain to them. So I'm going to check both for us to look at so that we can basically see all pages that are coming up. But that is, it's very important when you, especially because you're going to be working with multiple students, some are in placement, some are entrepreneur, some are both, their pages over here are not going to the pages they're going to look at are not going to be the same for every student. And that is, um, that is obviously different, very different than our previous state degree application. So this piece on the basic setup page is basically your, you go back to your white pages, I'll call them white pages for the, the term of lingo for us, from your easy records and this information comes from that financial statement. So from their beginning value date, they put in their cash on hand, checking savings, and then their ending value date. They do that with cash value, bond stock, life insurance, notes, and accounts receivable. That all comes from financial statements in white pages from the beginning year and the ending year. You continue to do that with the beginning values, but the ending values will be found then throughout the record book. Because in the record, or in the application, I should say, I apologize, I rephrase that, in the application. Because in the application, you'll have a line where you're going to put in how much you invested in harvest and growing crops this year. Every year will be kept, every year will be entered on the application, and they'll just take that ending date for your total financial pages. So the beginning pages are all from this beginning basic setup page, is from that financial statement, page six, in your easy records. Give everybody a chance that, I mean, if some of you have already looked at this and opened up a state degree application, but all of this information comes from that. Now, when you get down into the um, personal cash income and expenses, it'll tell you that this section reports personal items that were used as sources to support the development of your SAE program. Cash gifts. It gives examples of cash gifts right there. So, um, scholarship or um, gifts from grandparents, those are two examples that they have. But I think in our old application, we had a gifts section and a scholarship section where now this source of cash gifts is all in the same line. So you're going to combine grandparents' gifts and scholarship and those type of gifts into that line. So then the next source of cash is ag-related work that's not part of your SAE would go here, or other personal earnings that are non-ag. So any other job they had outside of their SAE where they earned money, or any other job that they had that maybe working for somebody else in ag but wasn't part of their SAE where they earned money would go here. And it gives you examples, babysitting, winning a cash award, selling a personal asset, or it says other work that will be used to develop your SAE program. Okay, so then total expenses and draw. This is where income taxes, payroll taxes, um, other payroll items, meals and entertainment, personal expenses, that goes on this line. And back in the old application, I should have brought an old application. I'm sitting in the boardroom doing the conference call, and I did not uh, bring an old application in with me, but that's uh, – it, that's all on the, the same page where we would put taxes, where you put the cash. Instead of going on that page, I think it was like page 10 something, 10A maybe. Anyway, I don't know the number. I should have brought that with me. But um, 
it doesn't go back there now. It goes on this basic setup page. And then the last item is your educational cash expenses. Um, this does not include living expenses, and this really is more pertinent for students that are um, applying for the American degree, but we do have freshmen in college that apply for their state degree, um, but this is their college tuition or books can be claimed here. Your record book that says that you pay through your parents, that's why. I was trying Say to that again. What was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. Did that. Was somebody talking to me or one another? Okay. So this is the basic setup page. Um, does anybody have any questions about the basic setup page before we move on? Okay, we're going to go to additional requirements. Um, this page um, is used to be a, a checklist part of the checklist, and some of those items are still on the checklist, and part, some of them are on this, but it has the candidate perform 10 procedures of parliamentary law, and this is you, the, you have yes and no as your choices. Can the candidate has presented a six-minute speech on topic relating to agriculture FSA. Candidate has participated in planning competition completion of chapter program of activities. This is where they have been a member of a committee, been a chapter committee chairperson or participated as a member of a chapter committee. These are all degree requirements that have been listed in our previous degree. This is where you select. Now, we said that, that we picked a student to have placement and entrepreneur, but I want this student to be eligible for star placement, and so I check there. I would imagine your next question is, well, what if we want the student to be considered for both? I don't have an answer to that. And I don't know, in previous degree applications, you did mark that, but I also know that I've sat in a section committee and we've changed a student from star placement to star farmer or from star farmer to ag business because we knew they were stronger in another area. Am I wrong? That happens. So how can a student select more than one star? Uh, They can't at this point, but FFA board needs to talk about as a section, you know, do, yeah, you have the power to go in and change that student's app. And if you feel like they would be stronger in ag business or you see that they've got a lot in agri-science, because a lot of times a student will come in and, uh, yeah, hmm. interesting. Okay. Creating questions for myself. I like them apples. Okay, um, and then entrepreneurial SAE hours. So on the American degree, it does not allow you to put in any uh, self hours in your, in your um, entrepreneur book because they basically say with the American degree, if you are the farmer or if you own the business, there's no such thing as unpaid self hours. But in Illinois, we do still allow unpaid quote, unquote, self-hours that you would put in the application. And so this is where that student would put the total of their four years or three years of books, two years of books. This is where they would put their unpaid hours that they've invested in their SAE if they're entrepreneur, if they're entrepreneur only. And then um, this is where they write, yes, I filed taxes, and if I, you have to put yes or no. And if you put yes, please enter the years that you filed. And if you put no, explain why you didn't. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't have any more on sheets. Okay. Um, any questions about the additional requirements page? Okay, going down to um, placement. So this is, a, this is a student that I say is going to be in placement, so I'm putting them in placement. And you can see, I've, like I said, this is a sample one that I have started, but I'm saying they are, this is, my first year is 2014, and I'm saying they're in this pathway. Um, and you can see our pathway choices here, agribusiness systems, animal systems, biotech, um, environmental, food science, natural plant, all of those. So I'm saying he's ag business, and um, in 14, you can see, he didn't have a job in 2014. It wasn't until 2016 that um, the employer or project name was 
test job paid, and he worked 59 hours to get paid $1,000, and then he had 200 unpaid hours. So in here, you write the, um, let me make it 20. But I will go ahead and put, uh, I will create one for 14 so you can see how that gets generated into the report. Um, there were zero unpaid hours, there were 50 paid hours, and made $500. And there were zero expenses. And then I click on the Add button over here, and now all of a sudden I have something for 2014. So that's how your student is going to enter their information um, from their record book. They're going to pick their year over in this column. They're going to pick the pathway wherever they wherever their project falls. Then they're going to put their employer name, project name, and then a description of what they did. And so the description can be longer than that. If you like for it to be, um, I'm just going to do this again and just kind of give you an idea. Now, granted, I'm not typing anything of a significance here, but you want to know how much will it, how much space will that take? And then I hit Add. Remember, you're clicking on the Add button, and then you can see now my description has all my, you know, word jumble that I have there. But that's how you're entering. Um, each year's employment record. And because I want to get rid of that word jumble and I don't want other people to have to see that nonsense, I can delete that. Mindy, John Eiser, real quick question on that description. Yes. How much are we expecting the kids, the students to put there? I mean, what, what are we reasonably expecting there? I guess, um, I guess I'd like some guidance there. You know, I don't know. Uh, I, when you think about it, back to your old state degree application, this is page um, three and four. This is that first page yeah. you turn to for a kid in placement, and that's where there's a job description. And um, so I would say, you know, uh, similar, to, um, similar to how much description is there. Okay. That doesn't Perfect. really help you, but I think uh, – for our purposes for the future and helping you and other teachers evaluate state degree applications, um, a rubric or a, a, you know, an idea of how much to put there is a good, play, a good question. How much description should go there? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. What, we tell, what, we tell, what I tell American degree students, especially if they want to be considered for STAR, the more they tell me, better their application is, the more likely they're going to be picked to be our star candidate for Illinois to represent us at the national level to have a chance at nationals. The more they tell you, the stronger the app. The more likely you are to get to agree, the more likely you'd be picked as star. So that's, that's what I tell students, but that doesn't tell you how much needs to be put there. If you want to go back and edit a year that I've already done, because I already showed you that I, we di I did 2016 already, if you want to edit that year, you just click on edit, and then that opens that up and allows you to edit any of those pieces there. What's your date of birth? Okay. Any questions about this placement exploratory hours page? If not, I'll move on down to the entrepreneur hours. 2010. So as you can see, I have something entered for 2014, and I have it in as animal science. So I clicked on that, and actually I'm going to add in an entry for 2016, and I'm going to say, and you can see, oh, maybe I'm going to go to two head this year, and my description, um, And you can see it just added that to that for me. So this is where your student then will enter in their their what they their ownership, what they own um, and under their pathway. Um, and the project name is that's where you put John Edgar Farms or Bumpermeyer Farms, and then so scope and size is how many head and then description. So what you could have in 14, and I will add one to 14 is so I have one head, but I need to edit that because I really need to say 
this is a And then I'm going to say, uh, oops, in my description, and maybe I, oh, I need to edit again. Sorry, thinking boots through. I'm going to change it to two head, and I'm going to say a Hereford bull, and and I'm going to say one Hereford bull, and one Hereford cow, pepper. And so then you can see that describe and, and updated that. Now later on you'll see where you actually you'll put your inventory numbers as well. But this is where you're putting your at the description of your SAE so that when they're looking at your application it tells me it tells me more about it. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to my income and expense statement. Yeah. And this and this this is old. On the old state degree application, this is 8A and 8B. So just for your mindset reference, for those of you who are thinking about the old application, this is 8A and 8B. So then you're saying to yourself, all right, Mindy, that's fine, but where is that in the, in the easy record book? And in the easy record book, that comes from a variety of places, but it comes from page 13A, when you're talking about your um, your inventory of your non-depreciable items, it comes from uh, 12A, your cash and non-cash expenses. It comes from 11A, your cash and non-cash expenses. Um, if it's entrepreneur, it doesn't come from the receipts and wage labor earning pages. But this is where so that those 11 and 12A and 13A pages. 14A pages, this is where that information is coming from, from the easy records that goes into this information here. So this is where you put your, your closing in and in inventory for each year. And if you have a question about it, you can, again, hover over the green question mark, and hopefully that will give you the description of what you're looking for. You'll be able to fill in that information there. But your closing and your beginning inventory, your cash sales, you still have value of what you um, use at home, and then value of production transferred to the enterprise or transferred to non-current bartered or labored or bartered or labor exchanged. So when we say transferred to non-current, this is where um, the heifer is born. She becomes a cow. You increase her value from one year to the next. You put the $200 here that she increased. And then you put down here, transferred from operations, non-cash transfers to non-current assets, and you put that there. So this is how that piece washes. Maybe I didn't put that in the right spot. Am I like, did I write the amount number? Okay. And so that's where you put those pieces. And so then down to my expenses, I have inventory of purchase, my cash purchases. I have my non-cash transfers. This is in the non-cash transfer for my, let's say I traded labor so that my feed was bought. I traded $200 there, and I'm going to put that down on um, my expenses. I got $200 back. My feed was paid for. That, so those washed, out, those washed each other out. So a kid can't ever say they didn't have any feed expenses because if you have animals, you have to have feed expenses. But how did you pay for those feed expenses? Well, I worked for them. So whatever the value of the feed was, you put up in line C1CF or 1F. Why is C like that? Oh, I see. It's a total line. So you go to 1F, you put how much it's worth, and then you go to 2D, and you put that it, you got it back. Um, this is really no different than our previous state, ap state degree application. Just wanting to make sure that I show you where that information is at. Okay, again, back to the inventory pages. Um, you see the totals will go as you type along. Your closing inventory, your transfer from operations, I put that $200 there. Um, but it shouldn't, did I put it in the right column? This is where, yeah, and then line C is where you can put a gift. This is where you put your purchases. Your beginning inventories will transfer down here. 
um, and your sales, um, and any non-cash sales. So when this says non-cash transactions are balanced, that means when I put this $200 here, and we said I said this was an, um, a non-cash transaction, that was $200 there, it, it says yes, because that means those two things balance one another. If they didn't, if it says no, then you have um, a question of, then you have to go back up and look for where did I put it that I didn't put it in the next spot. And so you have to make that transfer of anything that's uh, bartered or, la or labor traded. So if it's any type of trade or barter, you have to put those pieces in there. I think I have a chat question, Jennifer Waters. If a student has non-cash sales, non-cash sales pig, and labor, he trades for non-cash feed, we, can we do a combo of lines to add up to 1F? As long as, yes, yeah, so that question and answer to question, uh, the answer to Jennifer's question is yes, as long as, as those values equal one another in your um, trades, as long as those values equal one another in the trades made. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Mindy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Very good question, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, and so now I'm going to go to our next page, our Ending Current Inventory page. This is, these are pages um, 5, 6, and 7 in the old state degree application. I'm going off memory here. But um, this is where a student would put the harvested um, and growing crops, the plants um, on hand, December 31st of 2016. And there are examples here when you hover over the question, um, and, and it gives you an explanation of that. This is not a new item, so this shouldn't be anything that is unfamiliar to you, but this is where they would write the description of it, the quantity, and then what its ending value is. So let's say I have Ready to go. What would be the value of that? Mm, uh -huh. I'm going to hit add. And you can see how that gets added in there. So they would go and do the same thing for any of their feed, seed, fertilizer, chemical supplies, um, any of their prepaid expenses. So if you do any prepay of your chemical or pre prepay of um, uh, soil treatments, anything like that, you're going to put those expenses, or those assets, I'm sorry, there. Any of those assets would then go on this page. Same way with crops, merchandise, animals purchased. Um, I think it's helpful because this doesn't, this tells you um, uh, the ending value year. So if a student wanted to keep track of an item that, or, you know, you wanted to signify that you bought the item in 2013, I'm kind of going all over the place here, but if you wanted them to keep track of that, they could give a description a lot more. Oh, no decimal point. No decimal point there, dear. Hit add. And then in my description, it tells me. And so if you want to keep track of purchase, you know, what year they purchased it, so then it's easy to refer back in their book. Um, when, the, 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 when the teacher is looking at the book and the application, that would be very helpful. It's not required, but I think that would be, if I was guiding my student to do that, I would have them do that so that the teacher knows, that, well, they bought that in 2013, or that was, they acquired that in such and such a year. I think that makes it more helpful. But again, that's not a required piece. And this is where you put your ending value of your raised market animal. So again, none of this is new information. This is just where all that information from the old 5, 6, and 7 goes.
These pages are just like our previous application. Um, all of those pieces go. Uh, what I guess I haven't answered for you is where then is that information in my Easy Record? And that becomes the page one of your white pages in the Easy Record book where you have your capital inventory um, items. That's where that piece comes from. The pieces on, on the on this page. Any questions about those two pages? Again, those are very similar to previous state degree application, and those come from uh, page one of your white pages of the Easy Record book. Um, but happy to answer any questions you have on those. So, if I had put more numbers on more pages, these numbers, these beginning, uh, the value of the beginning date on 811, that would all come from this basic setup page. So I'm going to click back to basic setup just to remind you, if I put values in here, cash on hand, checking and savings, I'm going to put 2500 there. I'm going to put a zero, oh, undo that. Um, I'm going to put 0 for those. I'm going to put zero for that. And then when we go to our assets page, you'll see it pulled my my dollars over there. Yeah, we're getting another 10000 too. So anything from basic setup will go to fill out that very first column. So other things on basic setup, if I had put um, investment in land or if I had put any accounts or notes that are payable, any liabilities I have, that would drop into that assets page. Cash gifts. I got $50 from grandma. I got $300 from babysitting. I paid $25 to go out on a date. And now I'm going to look at my assets page. Those don't show up there, but it, my original money does. Now where do those show up? Then we get into um, our liability, and that again goes back to basic setup in that middle box where liabilities were. I get into my, I click on my net worth. That's my net worth shows me my cash gifts, my $300 for babysitting, my $25 that I spent on that date. That shows me that money that I put on my basic setup page. That generates your net worth page. So, so those three pages, I, quick question, Mindy Jennizer, yeah. those three pages yeah. automatically get filled in from the basic setup basic and from the record page. book. You, you yes. don't do anything to those three pages, correct? Right. That is correct. That is correct. So Thank I'll you. go back and we can look at those again. But yes, um, you, yeah, you can't type anything in these pages. The blue numbers are all coming from the basic setup page and what's in the record book. So now as I'm looking at my net worth page, you can see I said I had a beginning value of 2500 I got $50 from grandma. I got my $300 from babysitting. I spent my $25 on my date. Um, contributed capital at $2,500 is what I said I started with. How did I get my 2825? Well, if you look, 2825 is the 300 plus from grandma and then the 50 and the, yeah, is that right? Represents the value of personal contribution and what I've spent. So if you hover over it, it'll tell you what that is, but that's telling you how you got to that ending number. Um, I have, um, and as you know, when back in my, how did I have money here? How did I get that 10400 Well, I'm going to hover over the question. It's going to tell me this is your SAE income from your SAE hours and wages personal page. So that's back up underneath the additional requirements page over on our left-hand column. Um, oops, I want to keep hovered over that. Um, so that is where that's coming from. And it's a total of your, it's your total of your SAE net operating income and your net non-current transactions. They are transferred over from your income and expense or your placement SAE details. So anything that's in that blank, anytime you hover over a green question, it will tell you where it's transferred from and where that number came from. So that's another, uh, I think, valuable tool as you're going to this. As, as numbers just pre-populate, that's great. And I think many of us get excited about pre-populated numbers because we think they'll be accurate, and many, many times they are. However, a lot of times, where did that number come from? How did, how did that number get there? So if you have those questions or a student has those questions, 
they can hover over that green question mark and they can see, well, it's saying it came from your income and expense or your placement SAE. So when we go back up and look at your placement SAE, okay, so it looks like I earned 500 there and 1,000 there, and then it also says my income and expense statement. Oh, look, I said I earned 8,900 there plus my 50, my 1,500 go back to my net worth, and that equals 10400 So that is where those numbers are coming from. Again, um, this is not new information, but it is good for you to know where, how does that information get dropped in these different places. So then I'm looking at my beginning value, and when it says, it says a comparison, beginning of value. Your total assets entered on the basic setup page is equal to total liabilities plus uh, beginning beginning equity, and that says met, ending value, but on ending value, it says it's not balanced. So when I click on my green arrow, it says my total assets or my value on my assets page, okay, is equal to my liabilities page and my ending equity personal or SAE related earnings. So it's saying that the difference is I am I have three thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars less than because it's and I'll show you that too. So when it's in um, if the value was if you were if you overstated your assets, if the value was positive, it wouldn't have the parentheses around it. If it has parentheses around it, then um, I have understated my asset values or I've overstated a liability or I've over overstated um, net income. So it's basically saying that um, I'm reporting more or less income than what I am showing in my application. So how do I go about fixing that? And this shows your total growth in equity. So I have to go back and make sure that I've entered in all of my pieces correctly. So I'm going to go back to my basic setup page and think that take that out because I think I had that originally as zero. I'm going to, just to clear up and show you, taking these things back out. I also need to look at my assets page then. Give me that. Look at my liabilities. My net worth. Oh, but I'm $1,000 off. So I'm saying, oh, that goes back on my placement page. And I think I added a thousand dollars there. That should be okay, though. But did I record that thousand dollars my basic setup page? So it's saying because I have that reported, I reported an additional thousand dollars when I made that additional entry on my placement page. Um, when I added in, did I add in 2016? No, I added in um, crop scouting, and I added in something on here too. Right? There we go. I added in the income here. So I added an additional thousand dollars on my in my record book, but I didn't record that in my basic setup page. So I should truly have additional dollars if I hadn't spent that. Now I could have recorded. Maybe I maybe that should be in my ending value. Maybe it should be in something I spent down here. But if I have dollars in my placement on my placement page that I'm saying I earned and I have um, or I say that I have it in my inventory, if I say I have $10,000 that I've earned or that I've gained from the sale of products, but I don't have that recorded on my basic setup page, I don't have to have $10,000 in my ending value if I show that I've spent it or if I show that I've invested it. But if I don't show that I've spent it or invested it somewhere, then I need to have $10,000 on that net worth line to make those say that they are balanced. And now you can see that I say net. I say balanced. Does that make sense to everyone? This is probably, this is what is most different about our previous state degree application. This is what is the most different about our American degree application. In our previous state degree application, those numbers could be off by a little bit and we would, as long as the if this was line 28 and 29 of the old state degree application, as long as line 29 wasn't um, 
it could be greater than the line above it, but it couldn't be excessively greater because then you'd have to explain it. In the state degree application, in the new state degree application, and in the American degree application, those numbers have to match dollar for dollar. So basically what they're saying is if a student earned $2,000 with their SAE, either placement or entrepreneur or combined, they need to have $2,000 at the end of their year, at the end of their project, or they need to show that they have invested or spent that $2,000, making it be $2,000. They have to match exactly dollar for dollar. That is the way the American degree application um, functions and operates, and that is a change for students in our state as they fill out the American degree application. That's different than previous um, experiences with state degree, and that's the way our state degree application will function as well. So that is probably uh, that is the biggest difference that we have. Any questions about the net worth page? Um, I hopefully I showed that and didn't muddy waters. Hopefully I showed that and you could understand it. But um, any questions? I'm happy to answer those questions. Okay, all the numbers on this page are generated from previous previous items. So. Um, this page basically shows you that there are two ways to qualify for the, the state degree in our state. And option one is that they productively invested at least $1,000 and that they've earned $1,500. And so the student met as earning the state degree based on option one. The other way to earn a state degree in Illinois is they productively invested at least $1,000 or they have um, at least 750 hours, and those unpaid hours could be unpaid their placement hours, or they could be their entrepreneur um, hours that we had added to that that very first page. And because this student is didn't have that many hours in their placement page, or Phil said at 309, it says not met, but they qualified for the state degree on condition on option one. Students can qualify on both. They can say all you know one, two, three, all four of these lines can say met, and they qualified both ways but they only have to qualify one way, either option one or option two. Um, and basically option, either option is going to earn them their state degree, but those do need to say met. Now just because this says not met doesn't mean that it wouldn't um, print correctly for you. Activities. Um, this is where your student um, puts in their activities. And I have not put any activities um, in this. Um, just because I wanted to show you how this will uh, look. And this is area, district, region. I'm going to add that. Um, one of the questions that was asked of me, and I think it makes sense, you see that in 2014 I put that I went to Section LTS, but it doesn't record that I went, what year I went to that Section LTS. So I would advise that you write down Section 24 LTS, and it was here, and then add, and then your student then sees the years. And so as you have students who are entering stuff in, um, this allows you to keep it, keep it um, in order by year. So yeah, you mark, you check the year over here, and, but I also think it's helpful um, for the student's sake when they're putting it in to put year here. Well, you'll see when it prints, it'll print it separated by year, but as a student's entering it in, I think it's helpful if they put the year they attended that event, and then that adds to that. Skills, competencies, and knowledge. This is, this is um, uh, the old skills companies, not competencies and knowledge page from our old state degree application. We are unique. Um, to my knowledge, we're the only state that AET works with in developing their state degree application that requires this. They've not had to do this before, so they took, they really took hold of what we did with it, what we want from it, but they put it in a pathway. So you pick the particular thing that the student is doing, and you can see there's millions of choices, evaluate animals for breeding, readiness, and soundness, and then they put over there their contributions to success, what they did to evaluate the animals or what, how successful the animals were or whatever comments they have about this. This is, um, this is before your student had to type on both sides of it and, and, and create what their, their competency and knowledge was and then tell what it was success. Now we've kind of, kind of get them a, a cheat sheet here where they pick 
what it is that they've done. And again, there's hundreds of choices here. I don't know about hundreds. I haven't ever really counted exactly. But there's multiple, multiple choices that they can pick from. Troubleshoot, service, electrical. And then they can pick their contribute, contribution to success. So what made them successful in troubleshooting? Well, that they learn diagnostics or that they use their safety glasses or whatever skills, competency, and knowledge they can demonstrate. And, you know, my suggestion here is fill up the box. Because if I type... Um, Many ag teachers, please don't uh, judge my typing here, helped me complete this task by showing me how to wire a circuit and always use safety. So whatever I've typed here, I'm going to then type a lot of uh, – but you'll see when we go to print that you filling up your box does help you have more information there. So um, this is where our skills, competency, and knowledge. Again, not a new item, nothing new to us, but looks different clearly than our previous state application. So then I'm going to go to community service. Community service, um, just like other things, church. Um, church community cleanup. Well, I'm just going to put church. And then activity, community cleanup, hours, 25, add. And then my community service. And you can see that I met on hours, but I haven't met the, I don't, I don't meet this requirement because I don't have two different things. And our state degree requirement is they have to be, um, uh, two different activities, and they have to be at least 25 hours. So let's add something for 2015. Sure. Uh, let's see. Lions Club. Blood drive. Worker. Blood worker. That's uh, that's uh, that's kind of scary. And I'm going to put 25 hours. And I add that. And now I'm met because I have my two different activities and I have my 50 hours, so or 25 hours. Anybody if for American degree, it's um, 50 hours. Anybody have any questions there? Again, there's green question marks for you to hover over to to give you more information about that. I'm not giving a question. And then let's go to the checklist. So you can see on my checklist that. Um, and I'm going to be missing my FSA number. Even if I had put in the phone number, my address, all of those things, I would be missing those because I would still have missing up at my FSA number because I don't have an FFA ID number. So you can see this helps you know if you don't if you have anything red that says either not met or um, missing or error, then you need to go back and fix that. And so it tells me exactly I'm missing my FFA number, I'm missing a phone number, I'm missing an address. I'm missing an email, missing my school name, advisor email, missing my date of birth, I'm missing my graduation year, the years offered that I took ag. It says candidate has been active for the past 24 months. I didn't check that box. Candidate has a chapter in green hand degree. I did not put those dates in, but it has, I do have my um, non-cash income and expenses balanced. I do have um, my accuracy check for my balance sheet. I have my community service. I have, in the, so back, if you remember, on, back, on on additional requirements page up here, it asked me to do the 10 parliamentary law, the six-minute speech, um, the program of activities, and the committee. Because I said yes on those, those say met. Student has listed 10 skills and competencies. As you know from skills and competencies, I only put in two. And then student has done at least five activities above, at or above the chapter level. And that goes back to the activities page at least five out of above the chapter 11. I think I only entered two, and they were the same one. But that is my checklist to be very helpful. Just so you are confident that this does fix it, I'm going to go in and – oops, not cover. Not, it, oh, yeah, it is cover. So I'm going to – I think I was missing date of birth. So I'm going to tell everybody how old I am. 5, 21, 18, 21. And then I'm going to go to checklist. I wonder what it tells me about my date of birth if I'm too old to get my state degree. Uh, now date of birth is no longer on there as a missing item. 
So I can also pick my the cover when back down here under uh, the student has been continuous for the past 24 months. Dues have been paid. I got my green hand degree in 2014, and I got my chapter degree in 2015. And now I'm going to go back and check my checklist and see if those items are gone. And those items are gone. So it will tell you what you're missing. Hopefully, that's hopefully that is very helpful for you. So then let's talk about printing the application. Now, as I told you before, uh, Mindy, uh, yep. Mindy, on that page there. It didn't have the community service as a checklist, so I guess when we do this at, in the section to judge that, we'll have to look at that separate then, because I don't um, see community on there for the checklist that they met that. Right there. See where it's a, I'm hovering my um, oh, over yep, it. There it is. Okay. Yep. Good Thank question. You. No problem, no problem, good question. Now, so Steve, that does bring me to, I'm going to show you on our other checklist, there will be something you will have to check manually. So um, checklist not met, I know that my checklist is always going to draft PDF because I don't have a member ID number. So here is what my state FFA degree application is going to look like when I print it. This is my example student. This is the cover page that still requires parent signature, the candidate signature, chapter president, chapter advisor, superintendent or principal, and then your guidance counselor. And that guidance counselor signature verifies your student's GPA. So then this is the cover page, and this is where all so the will they still need. So will they still need the transcript with this one then too? We are going to ask for transcripts. I will show you okay. down here later in the, in the checklist for the transcript, but your good question. So in here, you can see all the pieces that we put. It does have my birth date, 521-71, but it says I'm a male. This is fun. It says John Edwards is my ag teacher. If I could only have been so lucky. And um, that's all the information that comes from the cover page. So then you begin to see this is the basic, basic award setup information. This is the basic setup page where all that information, this is what it looks like when it, when it prints. And, and it will print. It will be different for each student because you check placement and entrepreneur, and that's why you got 17 pages. If it was just a right. placement student, it would be less pages, yes. correct? Yes, yes, yes. We'll go back and I can show you the difference in that, Steve. That's a very good question. So this additional requirements, this is where that page is. And <clears throat> again, these are just these are these are things that we asked for that we wanted within our application. And so this page, you will not see this in the American Degree application because American Degree doesn't ask for this stuff. We do as, at our state degree level. So this page is unique to Illinois. And then here is your placement and exploratory. This is where those hours are. Now you'll see the rest of the page is blank, and that's that they put in what they have, and then that's what that page is specifically for. And then here's their entrepreneur page. So the, the big challenge I think that will face us is when you called in and had a question about a state degree, you'd say page 7 or page 8A. It, it doesn't quite work that way. And here, these, I'm going back to here, the pages are labeled this way, the basic setup page, the SAE placement exploratory page. Where they're by name instead of by number um, because the pages will be different by number if you did placement or if you did entrepreneur. So these are obviously entrepreneur pages um, that we, we went through and talked about. Here's your income and expense summary. Oh, I see. I kept scrolling. Here's your final balance sheet, your financial balance sheet. Um, here's your earnings and productively invested. This is where it's going to tell you that they've met and how they qualified for it. This leadership activities page, you can see I only put two things in there, but you see how important it is that if a student puts the year in, then it'll put things in order when it prints rather than, you know, because they might have attended LTS in 2014, 2015, and 2016, you're going to want to put all three of those years that they attended that. You're going to want to show every time that they if they have competed in crops in 
2013 or 14, you want to put that, in 2016. So that's why I encourage people. They don't have to by any means, but to me, as I'm wanting my student to fill out the application, the easier it is for me to read and retain the information, I think this helps make it easier to read that way. Now, will it print all of them that they put in there, or will it only print out so many? It will print all of them. So let's say, Steve, you had two pages worth of stuff. It would print okay. them. It would, and you'd have 18 pages instead of 17 pages. Okay. So this, this is our skills and competencies, and you can see I, I filled up the box, or very close to filling up the box on that skills and competencies. The more they fill that up, the more complete, the more detailed their, their book and their application is. You can see for community service, it does tell you. It targets the year in the box above that. And so probably as we work towards tweaking our app, maybe, I didn't ask Roger for this, but um, for leadership and FFA activities, problem is with leadership and FFA activities from AET, it drops those things into a resume for you. And so it doesn't, the state degree application at this point doesn't pull that from the resume. And so, and it isn't pulling it from the book at this point. So mm, it will pull them from the book. So I would imagine, that's a good question. I'm asking myself a question now. I think what's going to happen when it pulls from the book for a kid that's all AET, it will have the boxes like it does community service. Okay, now I'm thinking out loud. How does that look? Okay. Okay. And so then there's where your community service goes. This is your checklist that we already showed you your missings and not met. When you have all those missings, they'll go away if they're not missing. The mets will stay. Those hopefully those two not mets will turn to mets. And then this is the check. This is that we said the old checklist is about three pages. Now it's down. We've consolidated it down to one because we put so many pieces here on this page that are pre-populated within the application so that you don't have to do three pages of a checklist at the, at, when you're judging four state degrees at your section level. So these are the items that are on the checklist for you to do at the chapter level. So when your student finishes their state degree application, you fill out the column for chapter, obviously, at the section level, they'll fill out section. And then we will still, we will still have state degree review day here at the State FFA Center with our crew of retired ag teachers and friends of FFA, and they will fill out the boxes in the, in the state column. So the cover and student transcript, does the candidate have a satisfactory scholastic record? There's obviously several things they look for there. The average um, grade in all, all high school subjects was 3.5 on a 5 scale or 2.5 on a 4 scale, um, or in the top 40% of their class. And you can look at that at the transcript and obviously see that um, your guidance counselor has signed for that. The other thing you're going to, number two question is, will the candidate complete the equivalent two years or four semesters, 360 hours? So the way that reads, four semesters, 360 hours, that goes back to your question, John, about hours, John Heiser, about hours. Um, I need to clarify that information for you guys statewide. But um, you're going to see that you're going to look at the transcript to verify that they've had two years of ag. Yeah, because I, uh, I thought it was 180 hours per semester because it's 540 for the American degree. Right, you're right, it is. So it is 180 per semester instead of a same 120. I wonder where I was getting to 120. Maybe it's 120 per semester, 240. Nope, that's, yeah, 480. Okay. And the, question uh, I have, <clears throat> and the question I have, Mindy, on the required attachments number two, where do they, where's that told them to do that at that additional clarification to verify ag relevance? So um, <laughs> this, we, this is, uh, when we had a student before, if a student came to section, or section state degree interviews before and um, they questioned whether or not that SAE was ag relevant, it had ag relevance, um, then they would ask that student to provide a statement verifying that their SAE was ag relevant and they attach that to the state degree application and then the state degree, um, and it gets down into question five on the, on the um, 
book or on this application or on this checklist. So if you see question five on the checklist, is the agriculture nature of this candidate's SAE evident? If you check no as the teacher, then you have to attach a document that explains why this is ag relevant. And again, that is nothing new, but it is, we've never provided uh, any, and this is probably something for the future too, as I sit here and th th talk about this out loud, um, we've never given a rubric or a um, ag relevance documentation. It's been up to the section to verify whether they felt like it, it was agriculturally related. And it, it'll get to the state review committee and they'll question its ag relevance and then we will email the teacher and then the teacher will mail us or email us a statement back of why it's ag relevant. So um, if you feel like it's not evident, then you'd check no and you'd attach something. But you're not going to be asked to attach something until it gets to our level and somebody questions it. Okay, so it's not a required It's not. A required no, it's not. One. Yeah. And I, yeah. So, so all my yeah. students, if I've got a student that's raising beef cows, they don't have to do that. No, they don't have to do anything like that. It's, it's the, and, I, and I'll, I'll say lifeguarding because that's the example that comes to my mind, but it's the, the lifeguarding, it's the babysitting, it's the babysitting that we say is ag education, and if, or if there's question about it at the section level or the state level, then they just have to provide a statement that says why it's agriculture related. Okay. So on the transcript, oh, go ahead, sorry. Nope, that answered my question. So um, in the record book, um, in, a, in the SAE, or in the easy record book, um, where the student keeps track of their FFA stuff that they attended, you, for this one, 12 or more meetings from the last 12 months, that is in, you have to, they have to go back and check the record book to see where they have other FFA activities that they attended those, and you check yes or no. The same way in easy records, you're going to check the um, FFA resume, you're going to check the FFA activities. This one is not plugged in anywhere on the application. This is one that basically we're asking the teacher and the committee to manually check that. So if that's checked at the state level, we just put an NA because we can't verify that because we don't have the book to look at. Um, the same way with um, the has the student, and this is, this is another thing that's not in the application, has the student been involved in at least three non-FFA related activities, you have to look at the resume for an AET app and you have to look in the record book for a, an easy record student. And so you're just going to look in the white pages um, after FFA leadership and participation in other FFA activities and then leadership outside of FFA. So page 12, the final page of easy records, Everybody's just going to click, look to that, and check to see that um, they have done FFA activities outside of FFA. The reason why we did not put this within the application is because if you look at the constitutional requirement for the state FFA degree, it does not constitutionally require students to do three non-FFA related activities. But we have had it in our checklist for many, many moons. And so that's a philosophical discussion that I think we still need to have. And rather than put that in the application and muddy the waters because it's not a constitutional requirement, we're putting it here as a checklist that you actually have to look at their AET resume if they're an AET book or you look in their record book on page 12 um, for easy records. So then number so five they, on the check. Oh, go ahead. So if they Please. don't have, so if they don't have those three non-FFA activities, you check constitutionally, no. they can still get their state FFA degree. In my opinion, yes, and 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 not that, and I say in my opinion because this isn't something we've discussed with the FFA board. This is something that has come up at, since our last board meeting that we do need to talk about in January. But I guess I feel. That, and that's why I posted the constitutional requirements for the state degree, like when I posted out state degree information, because I, I really, I, this checklist over the years has become, in my opinion, a piece that, well, I think students should have that, so we're adding it to the checklist, and we're adding it to the checklist. I have no problem adding things to the checklist that verify they meet the requirements for the state degree, but if it's not a constitutional requirement for the state degree, why or how did that get added to the checklist? Because if it's 
And so that, so, but we haven't talked about that one at the, as an FFA board. And so rather than having Roger put it in the state degree application and, and, and have some controversy over that, I've just made it be a record book check thing at this point and made it in the checklist, and then I think we need to talk about that further. But there were a lot of other items that got added to the checklist, I think, over the years that really were not a constitutional requirement of the state degree. And I, I know we were doing it because we want it, and I think over time it's happened because we want to make sure that as students, you know, when we took away the, um, the percentage, the quota, um, or the percentage quota, 2% of the membership, we wanted to make sure that we were upholding the standards of the state degree and the traditions of the state degree, and I think we continued to add things to the checklist that show examples of good leadership. This is a strong leader who's in three activities, not FFA related. And so I think that's probably why it got added there. But again, if it's not in the Constitution to be earned, I'm just not sure we should be saying it's a degree requirement. So um, there's some things I think we need to clean up on that end. Now we went into a philosophical statement there, but that's, that's, that's the answer to the reason why of that. Um, so then number six is page three and four, do the business enterprises listed relate to the income and the expenses recorded? This is something that's been on previous checklists. Again, you just look back into the application, and if those things are connected, then you're in good shape. Are the SA income and expenses reported in the income and expenses section? If you look within the record book, we look within the application. That's a, a, a visual match for those. Um, are the inventory items related to the student's SAE? Are non-current assets listed relevant to the student's SAE? Um, again, you're checking the, and this is, and we put there, no personal vehicle should be listed there. Can they list a personal vehicle? Well, I sure they can. That would go back here on the basic setup page down here under um, um, when they paid for it, they would put it here, um, and then the, the ownership of it would go, maybe I'm saying this wrong. Oh, so yeah, they were going to pay for it. It would come out of this um, personal expense or draw and then it would, the inventory of it would come up on their um, not liabilities. I have to think this through now. I said that. Very myself more notes. non-current assets. It should be listed as a current asset for the student's SAE project. Okay. Where can that go? Okay. And then do all pages, all the pages in the WAR application have the same version number? So the version numbers are listed down at the very bottom of the application. They're right here. I'm just highlighting that in blue. And those numbers need to match for every page. And that, that kind of, that shows that, you know, they, they were printed on the, the same date, they were printed with all the same information, you weren't printing various pieces of information to, to get it to match, which you really can't do with this application anyway because it would say draft if it wasn't all um, working properly, but the version numbers will need to match. And all you have to do is look in the application for that. And has the advisor checked all applicable manual checks needed and are signatures complete and verified by the teacher? So go back to the front page to see if the signatures are on the front page all the way up here and has the teacher then filled out all the manual checks. So when it gets to the section level and they haven't checked these, you need to tell the teacher they need to check these. Because it will come to State Degree Review Day and they'll say, well, the advisor didn't even take the time to check this up. And you can hear a retired teacher saying that and so you need to make sure that the teacher has done that both at the chapter and the section level. Seven. So. Even this is, uh, this is the, the new checklist, if you will. Um, and that, again, is what the application will look like when it prints, except when you are, when it's an acceptable application, it won't say draft. When your interview is going to be. So one of the things that I'm going back to the page where it said pick your SAE type, I'm going to click off of entrepreneurship, and I'm going to go back to the print application and generate a PDF. Because Steve said, well, there'll be a different number of pages. 
absolutely. And you can see our number of pages went from 17 pages to 13 pages. And again, the relevant information for that student state degree is here. There's still a financial balance sheet, and it, all the information is here, but the student isn't printing pages that aren't relevant to them. So that was a question you had. And then thought there was another question. I'm trying to think what that other question was. Oh, I know what we want to look at. We want to look at the application that's an AET RAN application. And I'm going to look at that. I'm just going to look and see how that prints to see if it does put that by year. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Not sure why that doesn't do that, but um, that is something that it does not do. So, okay. What? What questions can I answer for you? What pages would you like for me to look at again? Um, are there any items that um, we did not address? Of our group, how many have – Steve, I know your students have completed an American degree application because you and I have talked through American degree applications before. So this does look familiar to you? Yeah, it does. It looks very okay. familiar. So yes, yeah, it it's they're they're essentially exactly the same, except it does have our unique Illinois information in it. Um, does anybody else have any other questions or reference to American degree applications? I did see a question from Brandon asking something. What were you asking, Brandon? Um, oh. So on the American degree application, and I'll do an American workshop in a little bit or in a couple weeks, but on the American degree application, it does not, there isn't a place for you to check the stars on, uh, let me think about this. Do, 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 do. Um, trying to think where a student, I'm, I'm no, answering an American. He was, I think what he was asking, Mindy, is when, on that special page that you said, like the taxes and that, he was having an American degree work on that, and that page wasn't there, I think is it's when he asked there. that question. Yeah, it's not there for American, and I think they check it on the American page. I think they check it on the cover page. Correct. That's, I have to, and I think, I, and that's I have when to he asked his question, when you're going over that special page that we have on there for the American for the state you're degree. Right. The, the American degree does not have that page. That It does not give you the place to check what star area you would like. I, it, not a page like this. I think it's asked for on the cover page of the American Degree. I'd have to open up an American Degree app. What do you do about taxes? Taxes go, Brandon Smith asked about taxes. Taxes go on basic setup down here on um, five, Roman numeral 5C. And they're totaled up for all years you've paid those taxes. So you're going to put all three years' taxes total there. Good question. I need to actually type the answer to that question, though, don't I, Brandon, instead of just talking about it? What if they pay pa taxes through their parents? Then you would consider, you have to say that that's a gift. Okay, so on the page where you explain taxes, you have to take that tax income as a gift and as well as you paid it. So let's say pet taxes were $100 there, and then there were $100 that you paid it out so that they wash. But you are saying on additional requirements, you're saying, did you file? And then you write, no, my parents filed. No, my parents filed my taxes in the amount of $100. And then you can write recorded recorded as a gift on the basic how that 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 that's how we would work that and then he's going back to his next question okay thank you awesome all right so what else do we have what other questions can I answer for you and I, again I want to thank you I didn't thank you in the beginning and I should have I want to thank you guys for calling because I feel like this is 
I've worked through this with Roger and we've done sample stuff, but I don't, I mean, I have an old student record book here in front of me, but I don't have the students who have the real life problems that you guys have at my availability. And so you doing, you being the first guinea pigs to be on this webinar will help me answer questions for all other teachers as we go along and as we get into this. So I want to thank you for calling in and, and thank you for asking good questions and your patience with me, answering questions and some questions that I don't have answered. But um, yeah, okay, we answered the star one and we answered the, the, the lock date is December 31st. And I'm going to ask Roger about sharing the examples with you. But again, John Heiser, I'm just not sure you want the examples. I don't know how they'll benefit you. Um, but I will ask about that. Clarify the hours per year. And I think Steve's right, that 180. But I've read that somewhere. I just need to look that up. Oh, and you asked how much of a description should go there. I gave you a, a general a answer to that, but I do think that is something that FFA board can give you more. We need to, we need to give you some more information on that. Um, FFA board and even SAE committee, we can examine that and say, yeah, you know, it should be so many characters or something of that nature. But I don't want to box ourselves in, but I think we should give more advice there. How does year activity look each year? Okay, so I think that's answered all the questions that I wrote down. Um, anything else? Any other questions that anybody else would have? Uh, Mindy, for the uh, section chairman meeting, will you go over with what we've got to turn in and send oh, you yes. guys from the, yes. to the state what you will turn in, Yes, what you will turn in will be different. Um, it will be an online Google form, um, and it will uh, – you're only turning in the students that you're recommending. We're not, we don't want any students that are, you're not recommending for the state degree. Keep those at the section level, tell them to go back and get to work next year to try to get it for the next year, but we're only asking you to turn in the information of the students that you recommend for the state degree. So, and I will go over that on section chairs on Saturday. And, and also have instructions for the section chairs that don't make it to the section chairs meeting. I think another piece that I wanted to make sure that I shared what I feel good about, and this may not make you feel good, but it makes me feel good, is that because the state degree application is very, very similar, almost exactly the same as the American degree application, I have three years of experience with the American degree application. And so I feel good about, I have that knowledge of how that application works, which is now very similar to our state degree application. And um, I can, I, you can, we can look at the students when I'm a student's working on their American degree application or when your student's working on their state degree application, you can give me their information and you and I can be looking at the state degree application at the same time and I can be able to address your questions, I feel, better than we could before. Um, and so, um, I, I, or I hope anyway. So please don't hesitate to call with any state degree questions that you have and we can work through those online. I can be looking at it with you. Um, that is a true benefit of having it in the AET management program is that we can be looking at it at the same time. And your student can be looking at it from their laptop and you can be looking at it from your classroom computer and I can be looking at it from uh, my office and, uh, um, and we could all be talking together at the same time, looking at the same application at the same time. And that I think it's going to be very helpful. And a student can change numbers, and as they change numbers, and I, re I to regenerate mine, I can see the changes they've made, and we can be working together on it. So I think it's very helpful. It's been very helpful with American degree students. I, I know that much. So any other questions that you may have? Okay. Um, what's... The next step is we're going to hang up and we're going to close this program. And as I said, Don has it recorded, and uh, we will drop those to YouTube, and then we'll share those with the state. Um, we're having more workshops um, throughout the rest of this week and, uh, and one the next week and one the couple weeks after that just to make sure we try to hit everybody. Um, if you felt like this was helpful, um, please encourage others to, to join the webinars. And, um, and if you felt like you gained enough information from it that you can help them, by all means, feel free to do so. But thank you guys very much for calling in. And at that, we will hang up and um, stop recording and turn the program off. There's no other questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome.